You deal with compression through your spine or lower back pain, and you find that you do massaging, stretching, conventional corrective exercises, but nothing really seems to fix it. Well, this video is gonna be for you because it's going to be a play-by-play -play of a session that I did with one of my clients who was dealing with that exact problem. So let's jump straight into it. So this video is gonna be a little bit of a different feel. Usually I'm the one going through the exercises, but I thought, why not record some of the sessions that I do with my clients and I can educate you guys in the process about how to work better with your clients or if you're dealing with that type of pain or ailment yourself, hopefully you can learn something new. So typically what I'll do at the beginning of a given session is just get a person to go through some form of breathing or maybe a really basic corrective exercise or movement just to kind of get them a little bit more in tune with their body. And in this case, I saw that Kaveh was dealing with a little bit of compression kind of through his lower back, really throughout his entire back line. Um, and this has been a problematic area for him in through that right side in particular, as well as around the shoulder blade. So I was just really getting him to go through about a five second inhale to a five second exhale, just getting him to kind of experience that breath himself, kind of see where air is coming in or where it may potentially not be. And as we're going through this, I'm kind of doing my own kind of general assessment, uh, just kind of looking at where his hips are, where his shoulders are, how is his rib cage sitting while he's going through this style of breathing. And what I started to notice is there's this piece of tissue kind of just beneath his shoulder blade that was kind of jutting out quite a bit. Um, so I kind of went there and I was just kind of rubbing it and asking him, is this an area that you typically have a lot of tension in? Because it felt almost like a, a thick rope kind of through there. So I'm just kind of doing some really soft kind of palpations through there and also seeing if he can breathe into that area. Seeing if it's an area that he can even start to bring pressure into. Because a lot of the time when we're dealing with a really bound up tissue, it doesn't necessarily need more length. Sometimes it actually needs more pressure associated to that area. So here I'm just kind of walking up the spine, just kind of feeling the tissue kind of around the erectors. And then I go to the other side. So I kind of see how is it on the left side in comparison to the right? What does his body kind of have a potential adaptation towards or a bias towards on that right side that, be, that could be causing that excess of tension through there? And then what does it feel like on the left side? Is there any type of support there? Or is there a lack of support and the right side is having to almost overwork as a result of it? So now that we got the general assessment out of the way, typically what I like to get into is something positionally where maybe we can start to orient pressure or the breath in a area that he may not potentially be accustomed to. So in this case, what I'm doing is I just have a stick in front of him. I'm getting him to kind of focus on a reach of that right arm. And to begin with, just kind of getting used to breathing into that right side, just kind of getting spacing really between that right hip and that right shoulder. And what we're trying to focus on with this opposing arm is you can kind of see him pulling on that elbow. And we're trying to almost focus on the arms pulling away from one another well, he kind of creates space with the breath in between those two points. So it's like his arms are almost stretching away from his body. He's getting some separation and then he's kind of filling out the pressure between where his limbs, or in this case, where his arms are in space. I'm also giving him a little bit of feedback here so you can kind of see him on his elbow a little bit. And I'm giving him just some feedback as to how much potential space he's actually missing or how much range of motion he's actually missing on that left side. And this just kind of helps for some sensory feedback. I find a lot of the time when I'm working with people and I take them into a particular range of motion, they're like, wow, that's like 25% more uh, range of motion than what I thought I had. Um, so I tend to be very hands-on in my sessions. I like to kind of feel the person's body, feel where tension is going or where it's potentially not going, kind of where pressure is going and almost trying to put myself into their body as much as I can. I find the more that I can almost feel into it myself, the higher likelihood I'm going to have of guiding that person in the direction that they need to go with their body. All right, so this is a interesting transition. Um, we got him on a, on a box now. And the reason for that is when I had him in the reach, something that he was communicating to me that was if he brought more kind of awareness into his foot, specifically the right foot, and kind of favored more of that heel and got uh, the tissues around the front side of his shin kind of more online, he found that it kind of created more support upstream. And I was like, okay, I wonder if there's a way to kind of link 
the lower body to the upper body. So we're gonna do more of a lower body focus and then you'll see a little bit later on how we're gonna kinda integrate the two together. So I got him here, his feet are kind of on the edge of a box and this is a little bit more unconventional in the sense that a lot of people will tell you to always keep the big toe as a contact point, which is something that is important. But for some individuals, because they're so mid or forefoot dominant already, we need to kind of take that out of the equation to some degree so that they can start to integrate different parts, in this case of his anterior tibs, that he doesn't really have any awareness or association to. I'm always looking at kind of the spectrum at where a person may be. And I may have to take them to the totally opposite side of that spectrum to kind of bring them back to the midpoint. The idea is, is that we don't just stay fixated on one extreme, but we kind of find that midpoint. And typically, we gotta kind of balance that spectrum out by going between different extremes sometimes. So in this case, I got him on that box. We're kind of working into a squat pattern here. And I'm also getting him to put some feedback kind of into my fists there so that he can kind of sense what it feels like to connect to the heels while he's keeping his pelvis slightly projected back. And this is gonna provide things like his lumbar, some sense of support while he's going through a very common pattern that we find ourselves doing or, or a pattern that we should be quite accustomed to, which is kind of this squat or sometimes a hinge pattern as well. I call it a hybrid hinge because it's kind of somewhere in between. But again, you can see here with my hands, I'm giving him a lot of different feedback in different areas. I shifted kind of from his tailbone, then I'm going to his right side because that tends to be a side that he kind of shifts away from. So I'm just giving him different points of kind of sensory feedback while he keeps the feet and the heels kind of as a contact point as he's going through that. So as we move into the next exercise here, you can see that we're staying on the box, but we're really combining the second and third exercise together in this one. So we're starting to apply some of that feedback that he was creating through the heel, uh, but we're gonna start to link this with the upper body. So this is gonna start to challenge kind of the rotational segment and stability in the upper body, kind of the spacing of pressure and the breath in the upper body, alongside keeping that heel pressure kind of as a base of support. So what we're gonna work through is that same sort of mechanism with the arms, trying to keep some spacing there, but still keeping the lower body as a focus. You can see I'm still having my feedback for him on his foot for now. And the reason for that is that tends to be the point where he tends to disconnect from more so than in his upper body. So I'm kind of going from his foot, I'm going back to his hip. And throughout this, I'm just trying to be mindful of where his arms are in space. Just trying not to let him get too lax, we'll say in the upper body. Just trying to keep that as kind of a general contact point. And all these types of motions are creating some level of space for the lower back, but also stability. Ultimately, if you're dealing with some form of compression through the tissues of the lower back, then likely it is a pressure and stability issue. And what we need to just be mindful of is that if we wanna solve that problem for good, the underlying mechanics behind it is what we're gonna to wanna to try to have some general awareness around. So I'm just giving him some feedback here now with the upper body as well. Again, I go back to his foot. You can kind of see I'm using my toe to press and he's like, oh man, that's really hard to deal with. You can see his face is grimacing there a little bit and that's okay. I don't mind him giving me a little bit of kind of forceful feedback for now. Ideally, as we start to work through these motions in a more adaptive way over time, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't want to see him like really trying to force his way through it. Ideally over time, it becomes more of a fluid motion. And as we continue to progress through our session, you're gonna see how we kind of start to integrate these different elements together. Now at this point in the session, what I usually like to transition into is some form of movement or starting to add kind of some rhythmicity to the, the body and the session in some way. I still felt like there was a little bit of compression through his lower back. And I just wanted to get a little bit more spacing there, just to bring a little bit more hydration and circulation into the tissues of the lower back. So what we're doing here is kind of a, a palm plant against the wall. And he's kind of using that as feedback to drop his hips away from. You can also do this in, with a assisted pull-up machine. It works really well too. But really using the palms and the feet kind of as a primary contact point, both to the wall and the floor. 
And then we're trying to create spacing via the breath between those two points. And you can really see how his uh, lumbar and really his whole spine is kind of filling out here. I'm kind of looking for there to be an evenness or a fullness kind of between his sacrum and his head and the erectors to be full in between those points without any type of overextension, we'll say through the lumbar or over retraction of the scapula. There's lots of different ways in which the body will, will find ways to kind of cheat. And really what we are trying to do in these corrective exercises is just kind of find where the body may have a potential bias towards and just not allow it to go there or use that as much or potentially change where the, the motion may be driving itself from. So in this case, we're keeping that heel focus. We're keeping the palms and the shoulders kind of as a contact point. And I'm just getting him to maintain some pressure as he's going through that. And now we have arrived at where most of my sessions finish, including for myself, which is some type of rhythmic movement, dynamic movement, getting the body moving, trying to link together all the work that we kind of did in some way to an exercise. In this case, we're doing a rotational med ball swing. We're going into kind of a lunge. So we're working aspects of weight distribution here, shoulder stability, hip stability, and we're initially starting with him getting length kind of through that right side as he's rotating into that left hip. So what I'm trying to kind of give him feedback on here is just being mindful of the right foot, kind of coming back to the right foot, make sure that he's pivoting off of it, but also keeping the left foot kind of as a general contact point to pull from. Again, we want to use the feet as a feedback system for the pelvis to create stability from. Then if we can use a tool such as a med ball to create stability for the shoulders, we create pressure around that. And then we add rhythm on top of it all. Now we're really going places. So this is probably one of my favorite exercises for people who tend to have a lot of compression or rigidity in their body. And it's a very safe way for people to kind of understand how to rotate into their pelvis and also just positionally create some tension and pressure around. So we have arrived at the end of the session. I typically like to bring everything back home, just like a good song makes you feel like, ah, I feel like there's some completion there. And I try to do that to some degree in my sessions, make people feel as if they had some progress, even within a single session. So I'm just getting him to kind of hold positionally, um, kind of this Y shape with his arms and give, giving him some feedback kind of into his back with my hands there, we can still see that there is some density around the tissue there on the right side. So we'll probably wanna to continue to work on that in the coming weeks. Uh, probably some soft tissue work, I think is gonna be something that is gonna be really important for him in around that area. But you can even just see passively with him holding his arms up in this position, there is more of an evenness between his erectors. There's more spacing through his lower back. There isn't as much of a a compressatory inclination while he's in that position. And then I'm just getting him to kind of bring his arms back down to his side and just seeing if there's any type of noticeable difference kind of at the end of our session. And I think for him, there was a aesthetic change kind of from the beginning and the end of our session. But I think even more importantly, from a sensory standpoint, he felt a lot more stable and decompressed in his body. He felt as if there was a little bit more space and when he was going through motion, he felt like there was just more stability positionally when he was going through certain ranges of motion. Anyways, this was the first episode to a new kind of series I think I'm gonna be starting called In Session. But really, I just kind of break down some of the things that I do with my clients in session. So if this is something you're into, let me know down in the comments below. This is just kind of a new idea I thought that I could kind of bring to the framework of my videos. And if you're new around here and you're into content around biomechanics, moving better, just living a healthier and longer life, just being happy throughout the process, then you can subscribe, you can like the video, you can do all the things that YouTube loves and appreciate all you guys. And I hope to catch you in the next one. See ya.